Hello everyone. Today's talk is a sincere opening to a certain aspect of myself and trying to answer the question, what do I have? Therefore, the title of this episode is What Do I Have? When I first look at how I am existing, as I look outside, I notice an externality, and this externality has form, it has shape, and based on this shape and the considerations I have of this shape, that second layer of considerations which becomes subjective and which becomes inner, more of an internal reality, is actually where all this is being projected from. So I'm aware that all of this is being seen, but when I close my eyes, it, I don't see anything. So simply how the mechanism of external reality is projected is that in a certain way of your apparatus, there is conscious sight. Without it, there is less conscious sight. And so, what do I have at that point simply becomes a view, and that view can change. So what man has is a changing view. And when we wonder if we are really a body in this changing view, it seems to be not really so. It seems to be that we are the awareness, the conscious, rather than conscious, let me say, we are the experiencer of that which is here. And the experience of that which is here is perhaps the most clearest expression that we can give to any life form. Because it is formed here, and the reason it's kept in form is because there's an awareness. The eyes are open to see it. However, as I wonder about this, I also notice that there are distinctions that are clearly identifying men into a certain existential position. And what that means is that the stars are, are above me and the ants are doing their thing under my shoe. So what that means is I, I notice that I have an awareness. And that awareness is beyond the thing. So it's no thing. So it's nothing. So it seems that when absence becomes aware that it is absent, it remembers itself in an empty clarity, where it's as if infinity has been found because it was always there. <coughs> but our sense of having this comes from our clarity of the objective world. And when we look at that clarity, it, that intelligence is weaved in, is blended, simultaneously present with what we're calling a subjective intelligence, which thoughts accumulate in their neural processes. And simultaneously, there is an awareness of the whole spectrum, which is what we're calling consciousness, or some people suggest the beauty, the unspeakable beauty of the soul. Uh, I have nothing in my silence. In my voice, in my external communication, I have many things because I am associating with many worlds. So in one aspect, the silence is leading to the chaos that never needed the order. And the order is realizing that if it does not look at the order anymore, it hits chaos. <clears throat> so, we are a view which is transcendent as man realizes he is self-aware. And that was really uh, uh, the aspect of the ape that stood up more than, you know, him getting on two feet. 
we have many distinctions and so we can we are the mind has an ability to be creative and work with abstraction so if we choose to judge someone it's just the intensity and the person can bring out infinite judgments you know you can relate many things to your mo in your moment you can create certain things that you can relate many things to many things so what that means is, as I sit down on that grass in silence and stillness, I observe that throughout certain periods of the day where I was like waiting for my coffee or doing certain things and whatnot, you know, I noticed in all those processes, there was constant association with an individuality that had to be kept. But as there is also simultaneously a collective awareness, that individuality is very playfully never here. The divine comedy is at work. <laughs> when it doesn't need to be, and that's the, that's the humor in it. I have noticed that the concept of having something is really re uh, something that the human idea needs, you know. Because when we realize we can't have anything when we, when we confront the experience of death, so what we have must be considered based on what we make of what we're seeing. Not all beings are ready to become self-aware in ways where uh, they were never here. Uh, the mystic and the yogi understood this because innately he knew of the collective intelligence that was existentially there and did not need to be anything that did not abide by the self. What is so beautiful about the unknown is that it gives you the separate distinction of your knowing, but simultaneously also suggests that there is no end to knowledge. So this self-awareness that is found with the human intelligence is suggesting this apparatus is only the pen and the hand holding it is of a transcendental vision. So the cosmos is no longer, what, you know, playfully in our imagination, the cosmic forms, you know. You're no longer praying to objects or shapes. You're not turning idol worship into ideal worship. You are utilizing all idea to self-reflectively become aware of the nature of being and the essence of creation. Very simply put, you are aware of what you are. And so I, I see that there is only a need to respond to the concept of havingness uh, if one is still an individual idea trying to survive in an individual idea. <laughs> You're just this one little thing in this one little world, it seems for many. But once you begin to see that the mystics had some kind of advice and wisdom. The Upanishads were, came out here for a reason. These ancient books are still here and relevant for a reason, you know, because in them there is an ability for you to get a self-reflection that suggests that the whole story of the thing was telling you not to take it seriously. So many people uh, judge, uh, spirit, uh, let's say, religion or many uh, religious texts or many just ancient texts, you know, as, oh my God, those guys did not have clarity. Those guys were, you know, uncivilized. Oh man, 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 obviously the man of this modern world is the greatest man, you know, you know, before we were just animals, you know. But you forget to see that reality is not so fixed because you are the individual consideration. Do you see this? So what that means is that in the awareness of what life is, we are becoming aware that there never needed to be any mistake. So what that means is perhaps the greatest mistake which was never made was that you thought you made a mistake conceptually you accepted a part in the reality of such ideology 
And so it's, it's something that many people go through. That is what your conditioning is. You're born and so ideas are helping you grow, but at the same time they're defining you. And so it is you who must become aware of the undefinable aspects within you. And it's up to each being to realize this for himself. The younger you are, the more aware you are, the more you can utilize the qualities of experience in this life. Become extremely self-aware and do not think self-aware just means being lonely and just uh, getting rid of a sense of other. No, self-aware means you being able to exist in any possibility in this reality. And by knowing that, you are beyond possibilities. And so the impossible was only impossible for that which could not see. And so we are beyond us <clears throat> in very transcendent ways. What do I have? I also have, as I explained, in my observance of externality, an identification with a subjective reality, uh, which I consider thought, or many people consider thought and imagination. It's not really defined, it's not really talked about, because it seems nobody can be very rationally, logically clear, you know. But, uh, it's very important to find the effort within us to climb mountains of perception we never think we can climb. If today someone came to me and said that there is this project and if you work towards it, you know, you would uh, get somewhere. I would, I would at first wonder why is there a need for projection, but regardless of all decision, the communication makes you realize before the experience, because the communication is the experience. The unknown is the truth when you cannot trust what you know. And what that means is, is not, it's not that there's an unknown form that you don't know yet that is doing something that you don't know. It, it's just that the nature of your experience requires your own exploration. And as you explore the nature of experience, uh, you are increasing your awareness to all that your experience can be. And so in that, the sense of having something turns into an experience that when it looks at all its segmented considerations of spaces and time, all its lifetimes, its awareness is the ability to see the simultaneous equality in all aspects of creation which breaks the frameworks of ideology in an instant to show you that you as the omniscience of all that could be aware of you are the creator and originator of all that is within your experience. So your sense of trust is really how much you trust what you're creating in an instant beyond space and time as a conceiver. Similar to how you open your eyes, there are eyes that are open which have kept you present. As we recognize the depth of our gaze, we begin to see that this intelligence is uh, beyond man's understanding. So what was very fascinating for Mr. Within was that when he went to find Mr. Within, he looked at different human beings and what they had done, and he noticed that 
a lot of what is found in Western culture is ignoring the existential confrontations of uh, complete silence and solitude and emptiness, as if like uh, we are trying to build all our fantasies and maintain our heavenly images in certain states of being and we're not uh, uh, trying to take our confrontation to different states of awareness. So what that means is there are certain people who have courage that is, let me say, in the horizontal dimension. So what that means is you're courageous, you go out, you stand up for yourself, you stand up for others, you stand up for the world you know. Right? But at the same time, there's a certain courage that is willing to, in an instant within this uh, consideration of a plane of existence, just become a moment of stillness and silence and become a different state of consciousness in which he is no longer individual. So what that means is the person in the room is suddenly no longer the person, it's the awareness of the whole room to the person and then the whole world and all that could be. Do you see? So it's as if mankind is realizing that within him there is a mirror and he becomes aware that the nature of all reality is a mirror and so the infinity was how the placement of that practice was found in this pool of transcendent, uh, uh, let's say, uh, sparks of self-awareness and regardless, there was a message in a bottle that only those who could dissolve and form could know. And this dissolution of form is, of course, not a physical dissolution. It is an awareness beyond ideology. It is an awareness beyond your term terminology. So what that means is the person who is usually making a judgment, or let's say some person, I've found many people bashing religion, and I'm like, it's, it's very unnecessary to bash any idea, you know? Only to bring a movement that has not been seen before is what is, I find, very acceptable and required. <coughs> but simply as I've seen people bash religion, it, I've, those people need to become aware that the way they are projecting reality and bringing judgment is where their problems are originating. That moment where you think you are an individual with power, you're going to wonder what would a collective with power would be and you would see that the understanding of a collective would mean that your individuality never had to be what it is. And so to be honest, billionaires are very interesting people in regards to how they handle external reality but in regards to their internal reality I find to, there to be a confusion because uh, you see similar to how the body has this concept where there's a set principle your body adjusts to whatever, whatever environment it is your mind if you constantly do an, an, a habit which you're not aware of you're not mindful of Let's say you're sleeping wrong every day, so your back is developing, you know, you know it's, it's bothering you, your back is, uh, uh, you have back problems. You begin to see that the solution is immediate alignment and f a fixture of your clarity and your awareness to what you have been doing. A thief went to a Zen master and asked, uh, without him be, having not to be a thief, how, how could he receive realization. The master told him, before you take the object next time, just look at the object, put it down and look at, look at it. And so the thief next time he goes and tries to be his own Robin Hood. <coughs> and right when he's about to take that jewel, he suddenly puts it down and gets this fabulous cognition of realizing it's just an object. So what that means is, uh, uh, similar to how that thief recognized that his whole life, his value was based on an objective form, he was beyond the frameworks of uh, his judgment. When you know you're beyond the frameworks of your judgment, you realize that you need to be playful with life to allow it to change smoothly and for you to transition into new views of perception. The world is clear and that clarity is found to be what is there. And so you never had anything, you simply were looking at what was there, what is here. There is here. 
if you simply become aware of it from a very rational and I found very uh, normal manner of looking at it, you need to think about it and you see that the human being is self-aware and the way he's interpreting his history and his uh, philosophies and whatnot has been at certain states of consciousness. But when we realize that we, the people who are alive right now, are experiencing the newest form of human consciousness on this planet, we begin to see that in our exploration of what is conscious, the understanding shifts from one being individualized to just a man or a body, and you realize, wait a minute, I'm not just a body in this experience of life. I am an awareness of all bodies within my experience. So what that means is I'm not just this body, just because I have more conscious control, my experience is not based on its spatial and time limitations and restrictions. Because the restrictions are e elusive, because they're being created consciously. Only if it's consciously created, you know it's an illusion. If it's unconsciously created, you don't know if it's an illusion or not. You have to be conscious that there is no illusion first to then have an illusion be made. You cannot make an illusion if you are not clear first, because then the illusion would have no purpose in its transition of form. So there must be different seasons uh, uh, for, the, for there to be you know, different trees within the same tree. The experience of man moves from its aware his awareness to objectivity and taking that objectivity and subjectivity and blending all dualities within experience into that moment where everything is here. And what are you doing running around? It's very important for you to see what you're doing in this life, to see what you are, because that's why you're here, right? When you look around and you're like, gosh, I don't know what to do. Well, guess what? You can always look at yourself and be aware of what is required. And maybe you look at yourself and you're like, gosh, I'm hungry. And you go eat something, you know? Similar to that, gosh, I'm not aware. Let me go see it. And suddenly you become extremely self-aware. It's very simple. It's very simply done. Sometimes people are, people are arguing that, I find it's a bit ridiculous that so many people are arguing, these poor Indian gurus, you know, they, they come from the east to the west, and suddenly all, all these westerners are bashing and these people are, you know, fake and false or whatever. And I, I sometimes wonder, that is a very ridiculous thing, because if you are not recognizing a human being for his communication, then you are not aware of what. It's as if like your reality is not open to receive another reality. You begin to see that that moment you begin to allow your reality to be more than what it is. Any object you look at begins to get a depth that was always there and it's as if like the nature of your attention is shifting uh, the details of this materiality. And as that happens, it is not something to really talk about because it's relevant to how you are becoming aware of the experiencer. And people are aware of the experiencer differently based on the work that they have done and the work that they are. For example, for me, it became very evident to me based on my uh, creative ability to see that a new moment of creation was always the possibility. So that brought realization for me in that manner. But for many people, you begin to see that the realization after it is brought is kept by the knowing of the shift in your gaze. So one thing you should know as a being and as a seeker of anything that is seeking you in this reality, you need to see that the purpose of man, as he becomes aware of his dimensions of experience, suddenly gets that vertical dimension out of that normal horizontal view, where he sees that each moment from the beginning of the day you woke up to the moment that you're about to close your eyes, whether uh, uh, before uh, you're about to sleep or you're about to sleep forever, you know, you, and you begin to see that that moment 
there was a subtlety in the interpretation of what life had to be, which if it was looked at a bit more, would be the salvation of your ideology from its chains of self-conception. So, many people wonder if there's a path out of the thinker. As if like you don't have to just be a thinker in this life, you just think that you're thinking and that there's thought. But is there a different quality of experience? And yes, there is, but it only comes in with your ability to trust the flows of life. So it's as if like there's one way of living which all our ancestors have been doing, which is a very kind of slow motion, step-by-step -step organized structure your path. And now, as man's consciousness is developing, it has become very clear to us or within that the new flows of, or the new ways of living your life has to become with your greater trust in your uh, holographic projection, in your, in your world of experience. You need to begin to see that experience is not bound by space and time, but the objects of, objects of experience are the limitations. So what that means, when the limitless looks at the limitation, uh, the limitation thinks that it's the limitless. <laughs> and so in a sense, you see that conception is kept there and there are subtler pi pillars in how definitions are blending to make our world what it is. And it, it's, it's really a flow. It's a, I, I like to say a flow of consciousness because a stream of consciousness because it's like before I used to really plan everything, but now it's like there is an utter silence and stillness and that if any turmoils are happening, there is an awareness that it is not a deadly effect. Do you begin to see? Death changes once you look at it. And that is why uh, one is eternal. What do I have? I have no thing. I have a moment of being. And it's, it's very funny because it's as if like that moment where you're trying to find Mr. Within and you begin to see that you're going on the road and the road is making sense. But suddenly when you find Mr. Within, you see it was the awareness of the whole road and the designer of the road and to how all conception came into manifestation. Your awareness to self dissolves the distinctions between an other and begins and makes it very clear that the frameworks of thought are creating the individual, but the experiencer is never individualized, it is a collective experience. So what that means is that uh, uh, let us say there is a projector on and there is a movie being played on, on a wall. And many people go touch the wall and they see, oh my God, there's a projector and I see it's physical, I see it's an object, but how, well, how is the projection moving? And, the, moving? and there are people who study the mind and suddenly go see, oh, okay, it's moving because of the design of where the projection is coming from, so the intelligence of how this whole cosmic system is kept, right? And then you go begin to see that, oh my God, the projector could be turned on and off because man doesn't know and man knows. And so what happens when the projector turns off? Nothing. The projector will never turn off because the nature of self-observance is always its own continuation. There is no end to you. That is why there is hope. That is why the system is, that is why there's evolution because this point of existential attention we are is always transcending. And it is our clarity which first takes us out of our uh, elusive and not looked at creations, you know, and so it brings us to a moment where we realize that the wrong that we did was only in our lack of mindfulness in what we were doing. It's as if my greatest mistakes ever in this life were ones where I was not aware what I was doing. It could have been an act of rage or it could have been an act of uh, lack of voice where I saw something and I didn't say it, didn't say it.
When you confront the nature of your silence and the nature of your stillness, you begin to see that the noise that you're considering outside is never outside. And so all movement can be vibratorily, in a vibratory manner received uh, to be uh, the origin of the spark of how we are aware now or that we see that man has words and that's where havingness is really real and as words end in the silence of your awareness to your existence you will begin to see that the answer to many of your problems that are in regards to what you want and what you don't have and what you think you need in regards to purpose and ambition will all shift into how your trust in life was the solution rather than how the trust was presented to you in structure, form, theory, you know? Perhaps ask and you shall receive was a comment to suggest to man the human consciousness that as you communicate, you become the experience of the communication. And so if you ask very sincerely and honestly for a certain form of manifestation in your clarity of emptiness, it shall be present. So it is no longer you presenting it. And this is where detachment comes and there comes again that divine comedy of the mystic being able to shake the world but leaving it the same, leaving it untouched. Because there is a knowing in the untouchable that will always be greater than the touch of the most powerful man. You know, there could be, there could be great demise in how the human facility continues on. But it is never the end because it is very clear to Mr. Within that you are the expression of the cosmos. And the expression of the cosmos is nowhere else to be. In which when we look at space, it is absence. And is absence looking at itself through form? And so perhaps that student in the classroom who never had a question knew that there never needed to be questions. For existential awareness was always beyond the limitation that man ignorantly played with and never looked at. Because their academia gives you that great moment where you're graduating with your degree, but simultaneously you begin to see that it is as if you have just, gained, you have just gone to a facility, received a certain task and are just continuing this task to make a, a valuable life. But I think a valuable life will be in how much you're engaging in your day and how much your actions are contributing. So what that means is uh, when you look at the human being, uh, some people uh, look at the idea of I want to have a good life. Well, let's say a good life is one where you're comfortable first. First, let's say you handle comfort. So if you want to handle comfort, you need to do things at a certain state of being where you're mindful, aware, and so the Buddha suggested hold a flower in your hand. Now, let us take it to the next step. You want to live an efficient life. You want to live a life which is efficient in how, not in what you physically have per se, let's say in experience, so that when you wake up in the morning to before you sleep, you're completely experiencing uh, uh, what the day is bringing and how that all, how everything you've received during the day is transitioning into your ability to observe it during the night. And so when you look at the quality of experience, you just need to begin paying attention to where your attention is. What is attention to you? What is awareness? And self-awareness will uh, remind you of the clarity that you are. So after we are realizing that the, we can have different qualities of experience, we first must stabilize the body in its healthy environment. So first, make sure that you are immediately living in a peaceful world and not one that is fake. So sincerely discover a sense of peace and walk in that peace and, and show it to the world. 
you know. It is not a game of abundance in regards to wealth. You're not here to make money. You're here to make life happen. And if you really want to know what that means, just go look at Mother Teresa's life. That's probably the most badass life I've ever lived. <laughs> And so, let us continue on that you adjust the acts of your day with the ones that are contributing to your understanding of collective consciousness. Collective consciousness is in your co-creation, in your ability to see that when you are in that team, when you're in that moment where you're harmonizing uh, with other individuality, it is as if the fingers have just realized the palm that is holding this world. That recognition uh, is one that will cleanse you and open your awareness to the infinity that is your aspects of experience in regards to how your frameworks and your knowing suddenly have a potential to all be unknown. When the unknown is there, there is never a right and wrong, but the, there, there may be an eternal question. <laughs> So eternal beings may ask eternal questions. It's very important to be aware of that matter. The subject is there is we're looking at. And when we look at ourselves, we can see on some level that, okay, I can see that I'm an individual, that my name is Bob and whatnot, you know. But suddenly, at that moment, recognize that As we pay attention to individual design, we are collectively always present. The minute you begin to see individual manifestation and physical reality, you are kept by collective understanding, collective intelligence and knowing. It is simultaneously here. But your experience is on one aspect of the spectrum and it's very important to realize that you can't just go to heaven without first seeing why there is a hell. You cannot suddenly become a good person without realizing what is really bad in this world. And so these realizations must come with your pace of understanding because each being has a different life. Each being is receiving different images, different conditioning. And so you begin to see that what do I have? I don't even have the concept of I. I don't have the word I because how can I have it? How can there be the certainty within a dynamic process? When I begin to see that my states of being are not just when I'm just looking at my body, but just in the moment where my whole moment is conscious of itself to a point where there is a transparency into every memory and ideology I've had. And in an instant, the silence had always spoken first. Madness is simplicity, thinking it's complex when it's actually very simple. Complexity is a luxury. People who uh, bask in too much ideology get spoiled because they forget the value of direct experience. If you also read too many books and you're not going outside, you're not getting into those experiences that are coming spontaneously, you will not experience the value of uh, what can be found within your moment as it transitions into different realms of uh, <coughs> uh, certainty. 
what that means is uh, suddenly in one moment you're, you're in a club and you have that certainty, some moment you're suddenly in a forest and you have that kind of certainty, suddenly you're in, in, you know, in a classroom, you have this kind of certainty, suddenly you're in you know, a boardroom meeting and you have this kind of certainty, suddenly you know, you're uh, in a coffin and you have this kind of certainty. You know? So it's very important for you to realize that uh, manifestation, we can be playful with it as the knower of the observer but as the object, as the object, we will always be offended. What that means is more than how people should tackle those people causing, let's say, racism and sexism and all these problems that are just coming out of nowhere and coming out of a lack of awareness of man to his action and communication needs to be all found through a shift in the knowing that he is a new consciousness. So more than you realizing, oh, what's there in the unknown, is you being the experience of the moment that you are. And so there is nothing greater than novelty, for there is continuation in this existence. And in that continu continuation, the minute you look at the nature of continuation, you immediately are confronted with the idea of temporal reality and also the idea of infinity. A lot of people wonder if we're infinite beings. It's very clear. Immediately look at what is temporal and you will know that there's an aspect of you that is infinite. Simply as that. Because the temporal is being accepted objectively and objectification could never be certain when it never thought that it, anything was there. And it's a dangerous position. You know, we must not think that the world is too dull because then it's as if we're putting shades on at night and we might trip. <laughs> What do I have? Unspeakable passage. Much blessings. Thank you.